Hey everybody, I'm Dustin Brett, software developer up here in Canada, and uh, I wanted to make a short video demonstrating the progress I've been making on my side project, uh, a Windows 10 clone in the browser. Sounds kind of interesting, hopefully I got you hooked there. Uh, I've been working on this revision of the project since the uh, start of the year, and I've been streaming my work, actually, all the code commits, uh, every Saturday at 9pm PT Pacific Time. And I've got playlists on YouTube if you guys want to check those out. Uh, but for this one, I just kind of wanted to demonstrate what I've what I've been up to in these nine months. And um, yeah, I think let's just dive right in. So here's the app. Here's how it looks right now. And one of the first things you're going to notice is uh, the animated wallpaper. This is using something called uh, Vanta.js, I believe, <clears throat> to do a cool little animated wallpaper. And one of the first little cool things I'd like to show you guys is that you can actually change the wallpaper and you can use whatever picture you want. So if we go to here, like, let's say Unsplash, go to NASA's website, and we decide we want to pick a <clears throat> certain picture. Let's say this one right here. This one's cool. We'll say, okay, let's just download this. So you see here it went to my downloads within my browser. If I go back to my web page, I can actually drag it from the, the browser area or from even outside in the operating system into my window, drag it in. So there it is right there. One of the next things you'll probably see is the fact that it uh, was able to get the cover art or the, the picture. So it will do the picture for for images if it can get them. And it didn't happen right away. As you saw, it had a default image. And then as it loaded it, it showed it right here. And then if I right click here, I can say set as desktop uh, background because we have context menus as well when I right click and say fill. And then there we go. We can fill it with a cool wallpaper like that. I could also right click this and say I want to rename it to uh, wallpaper.jpg. I could uh, cut it from here and I could move it into another folder here via the file explorer. I can paste it in here. Now it's over here. I can copy it and then also put it back here. Now it's in two places. If we want, uh, I can delete it from here and now it's just back over there. I can take it from here and I can drag it into here and drop it in there. I can make another copy of it into the same folder and it'll iterate the name. <clears throat> We've also got selections here so I can select both of them and drag them both in and drop them over here. Just like that. You can also right drag them, select them both and go cut and paste them both in here. I can uh, right click one of them here and I can say download and it'll download it as you see here. It's the same wallpaper. I could drag it back in here and then you can see that it was the same one. Uh, I can also select multiple and when I do download, it'll actually create a zip file. And if I drag the zip file onto my desktop here, you see that I also have zip file support and I can double click it and actually open the zip file just as another folder and you can see the folders inside it. So that's looking inside a compressed file. Uh, I can also delete that file. Uh, okay, that was just a small amount of the things I can do. What else can we do? I can also right click and press add file and it'll pop up an upload dialog, at which point I could pick the image again and then now we have it again with its proper name that was on my desktop. We can select both of those and just delete those. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go into the start menu here and I'm going to press this power button. Also, we have a start menu, surprise. Um, so many things to get here too. But let's press power and that'll reset everything. We're back to our animated desktop for a bit because I enjoy that one. Uh, just get into the start menu here. We, if we hover over the left menu, we get the sidebar. Click start, it'll toggle off. You can hover back in and toggle back on. We can click documents as a shortcut to get to the documents folder here. As you can see too, there's a task button. Let me just close this downloads part. In the task bar here, you got your normal task bar. If you click it, it'll minimize. You click it again, it'll maximize. You see if we hover here, we get peak support. So you can see it'll actually peak the window and that's live. So if I hover over these to select them blue, now when I hover over peak, as you see it is, that's a live image. Uh, and that actually is supported from other, other applications as well. Let's say here, uh, another app that we have. Let's go to my music folder and you see we have a music demo MP3. I can double click that and open it in uh, essentially Winamp. And then that'll show up as another taskbar entry here. I can click it to minimize it. As you see, when I hover, we also get the peak support here. Uh, those little blue circles is a little bug I've got noted on my massive wall of post-its of things I'm working on for this project. Other than that, it's a fully functional uh, Winamp. Uh, I've got some preloaded skins here, such as Aqua X. Uh, I can also go into the skins folder here where they're located and double click one to load it, such as SpyAmp, which was my favorite back in the day. We can lock that here up to the top and leave that be. Or actually, we'll just close it for now, probably. Let's just bring it back here and close it. We'll close some of these other windows. Another thing we can do, let's say we have too many windows open here. I can right click on the taskbar and go show the desktop. It'll hide them all. If I'm okay with that, I can bring them all back. Take a peek at them there. Uh, what else can we do here? I can also right click and I can make a new folder. 
And we can go into that folder, empty as it is. And I can, uh, inside that, I can make a new text document, call it rich, rich text document. As you see, when I'm not selecting it too, it'll truncate the icon text. I'm still working on improving the truncation logic to be a little bit closer to the, to a better clone. So you click that, it'll open it up. So if we double click it here, we can see that it opens up a new empty text document. And this is using the tiny MCE WYSIWYG editor. And we can also, the, with this window support, we can do things like maximize. We can uh, right click on the taskbar and restore it back to normal size. You can minimize it. As you see, you get animations along the way too. Uh, you can pick different taskbar entries to focus on different items as, as you'd expect in a normal operating system functionality. Another thing too with that WYSIWYG editor, I have a blog post that I've started to transition from my WordPress blog. So as you see here, we can double click here and then we can see my WordPress post. And I could maximize that and you could just kind of be reading my blog if you wanted. And then at the same time, you see here, it says click to switch to design mode. I can click this. And then if you want, you could edit my blog, you know, let's say, oh, you know, in New York City, he, let's put that underlined and let's just delete this whole piece right there. And actually let's move this image over to here. So you can do things like that and kind of edit my blog if you wanted to. It's another cool little piece of support that, uh, that I've added. And let's say you don't want to open in the WYSIWYG editor, but you want to edit the the source file, you could right click it here. And one of the options I have is open with to open in other supported file editors or apps. And in this case, I have something called the Monaco editor, which is actually the same code that's used for VS code, uh, the same text editor piece. So as you see here, now I can look at the HTML content of that WYSIWYG doc of that uh, document, which I've made up a fake format called WHTML to just be like WYSIWYG HTML. And this, with this comes a right click support. That's the same as VS code. We also have the command palette the same way, same kind of search, which is very uh, functional. So that's a good part of VS code basically that we got there. And I'm going to keep adding to that with different ideas. We can minimize that for now, or actually let's just close these. Don't need too many open. What's next on the list here. Also from the taskbar entries, we can right click and say, close one. Um, you can double click on the title bar to op minimize and maximize it. Uh, now let's get into some of the other apps, let's say. Next one up I had on my list was, oh right, we also have dynamic folders. So let's say here for the desktop. So this desktop actually represents the real desktop here. And if I were to say, take this favicon and drag it onto this desktop folder, as you'll see, it updates here as well. So you get that dynamic updating as well. I can drag it back and you get the dynamic removal. Uh, we also have cascading windows. So you see if I open another window, oh, this one, also we have a uh, memory of where windows were. So as you see here, if I put documents at the top right, and then let's say I refresh the page, next time I go back to the documents folder. Uh, oh, sorry, we have to, this is one little thing I haven't changed yet, but you have to close the folder because a refresh is almost like rebooting your computer without warning. So let's say I put the folder here and then I close it. Now it remembers it was there. Now when we refresh and we open it back up, we will see, there it is. Yeah, so it's back. And it's in the position that we'd expect. And I also can res Resize the windows, of course. I've been demonstrating that. And like I said, it remembers position. Let's move on to the next thing here. We, we've done the photo. Now let's do the MP3. So here we've got the free music archive. We've got a song here called Night Owl. I'm going to download this song. Uh, okay, we're just going to take a peek at it. So here we got the MP3 here. Now I'm going to do the same thing and just drag it onto the desktop. And as you see here, we also support the cover art for images. So as I drag it on, it'll actually get the cover art from the MP3. And then you can double click it and play it in, in Winamp, just like the other things, just like a normal song. Um, next up I have, uh, well, I've kind of gone over a bit of the start menu. Um, I could go over one of the apps now and let's get into the Doom app that we have. Basically this is a DOS emulator. So I've got the, I'm using a DOS emulator that's working with uh, WebAssembly and it allows me to play any kind of DOS games. I'm, this is the shareware version of the game. So it's only the first level but you can start just playing Doom just like that. And you can uh, min maximize the window here to make it a bit bigger if you want, or minimize it, put it over there if you want, let's say. And another thing you can do, so let's say we're, we're done with the game for now. I make my game save, and then I close it to go back later. I refresh the page. Now I come back another day, let's say, open it back up. We got Doom here. I wanna load it back up. There's my game save. And we're right back to where we were. And one thing that's interesting about that emulator is we, is we also have support to uh, drag in new stuff. So as you see here on the archive.org, this is the MS-DOS games library. Uh, one of my favorite ones is Commander Keen. So I'm going to do a search for Commander Keen here. And you see they got, let's say, Commander Keen 6, the first one. Okay, uh, let's download the zip here. 
Now, if we go back here and we look at the Commander Keen Zip, I drag it on just like I did the other ones. And now it's part of my desktop. Let's say I want to put it in the Documents folder. Go into my Documents, move that back over here, and I'll put Commander Keen in here. We'll double click him like that, and we can take a peek at the folder. Okay, it's got a C Keen folder. And inside that, there's this Keen C.exe. Okay, now if we right click this, we can open the zip in JS DOS. And now it's actually opened in DOS. Now, if we do directory, we can see it, there was that C Keen. And within that, there's that Keen 6. So we'll just run Keen 6. And just like that, we'll be now we're running Commander Keen. And we have that same game save support, that kind of thing. Okay, we'll close that one. Um, another thing with these with the game save support is it actually goes to a real folder called saves. So if you look in saves here, you'll see those are the two files that have been saved. Um, and the next thing we could show you with that, I could show you with that is that we also have a x86 emulator. So if you see here, I can double click uh, Linux and it'll run, this is a Linux ISO running and actually loading a full, full mini version of Linux basically. And it actually has a mock version of the file system as well. So I can load up the mount, oops, cd forward slash mount ls, and there's the desktop. Let's say I go into the desktop and I can look at the desktop icons. I can uh, get the content of one. There's an example of the file explorer shortcut. And with this one, how it does saves is let's just say I close it. Okay, it's closed. It actually saves the state. So you see here, it saves it as a bin. Now when I open it up, it jumps right back to it and I'm right back in Linux right where I was. So that's another cool example. Uh, and same way, we can just drag things in there. I think I had an example. Yeah, I have an example with a, a more full version of Linux. It's a little slower, but it's called Tiny Core Linux. Uh, it's, I mean, this isn't definitely the way to run Linux in general, I would say, but you can. So we can just download Tiny Core here and, and get it booted. And we can see that it'll uh, also work. Let me just drag that on there. That's an ISO. So it's going to, by default, open that in... Oh no, actually ISOs also can be opened. I also have support for ISOs. So you can see here, we can look at the content of the ISO, but then if I right click and go open with, we can say we want to open it in the virtual 86 software. And there you go, we're booted into Tiny Core Linux and it's going to start its little boot up procedure. And at some point, presumably, I believe there's a GUI as well. We could just let that go for a second. That takes a little bit of time. Uh, in the meantime, what else can I show you? We discussed Monaco, we discussed Tiny MCE. Calibri is just another v uh, x86 Linux-esque OS. It's different, but it's it's a pretty cool one. Ruffle's another one I wanted to discuss with you, but I wanted to let this Linux boot first because uh, it can get a little heavy when you run a lot of different apps, but at the same time, it's fully supported. So let's give it a shot, actually. I'll close a few of these things. Where was my documents? I wanted to look at my flash files here, and I've actually already downloaded a few fun flash files. One of them being this thing called Badger, which I don't know if you guys remember back in the day where there was this Badger, Badger, Badger song. So we'll open up the Ruffle player. I have a default open with nothing in it. And then we can actually drag a file onto it. So if we see, we drag Badger on here and there's the Badger, Badger, Badger thing. And at the same time, we got Linux booting in the background. And this is a website, by the way, in case I didn't clarify that at the start, I'm running all this on a website. Um, we can close Ruffle for now. So you can see, yeah, we're fully in Linux here. We got a real... This is a real installation of Linux. I think you can do like cat, et cetera, OS releases. Yeah, that's, I don't know if it says the kernel there, but this is tiny Linux, so. And then same way, I can just close it and it's gonna have a save for it. So now if I were to open it back up, it's gonna remember that state I was in. And there we go, we're right back in Linux, quite quick. And it should remember that even be between refreshes. Let's try again, we open it, oops, not as a doc folder, open it back up. Yeah, boom, we're back in Linux. We could do some other stuff if we wanted in there, whatever whatever these other things are. Editor, I don't know what that's supposed to load. There you go, it loaded something. So still had its instance running. Another example for Flash I could show you. Um, some of the ones I really liked were the strong bad emails. This is back in the day. I don't, most people probably wouldn't necessarily remember that, but uh, they have them on, on this archive.org as well. So you can download the Shockwave Flash files, these SWF files. And that's another thing we could just drag on here and double click. And there we go. It'll just start playing a flash file like they used to do back in the day. Uh, also, we have the clock here at the bottom right. Uh, and I make I use this show the seconds as well, just like I do on my own home computer. And actually, those seconds I sync up with your own your own home clock. So it's not just like as soon as you start, that's when the minute starts. It, it, it does sync up. So they, they keep pretty, pretty close time. Um, 
other than that, I think we've we've discussed a lot of it. So, yeah, uh, I don't want to waste any more of you guys' time. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the this little demo, these nine months I've worked on. Uh, it's a good chunk of the post-its right there in the finished column, but I still got a lot of work to do. So please tune in for the, for the next stream I do, Saturdays at 9 p.m. PST. And I'll start doing more of these demos, perhaps uh, on a per-monthly basis, or at least at the year mark, so you guys can see what kind of progress we've made since then. Uh, if you like this video, please throw me a like. If you want to support me, if you want to follow me, that kind of thing, please subscribe. So thank you. See you guys. Bye.